Hey there everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at random noise filtering from our images. We gotta start though by adding noise to the image. To do this, we're just doing the basic load our image, rotate it, create a copy of it and so forth. And we're going to add random noise. Before we get into the noise portion though, we need to convert the data type of the image. And to do this, we have to go from the uint8 data type that we've been using to a double. The reason why is that you can only add data types that are the same. The random noise that we generate will be a double, and thus we must want our image to be a double. Now there's a chance the image that you're working with is already in a double. That's awesome. Mine isn't, and I have to convert it. So let me show you here really quick. Here's our basic image coming in. And you can see it comes in as the uint8. And if I do im to double image and run that, you can see the answer out is in the double format. And that's what we want to do. This line takes care of that. We're converting it to a double. And then we need to create our random noise. The first thing I'm going to do is grab the size of our image which is 640 by 480 in this case. And then I'm going to create random values. MATLAB has a few different ways to do this. If you're not familiar with the random values, no problem. RAND will give you uniform random variables between zero and one. And then RAND N will give you a Gaussian distribution of variables. I encourage you to go ahead and look these up as such, get the documentation on it so you understand what values you're generating because then we're going to add these values to our image. We're gonna end up with a matrix of values here. I'm dividing it by 10 so that we don't have such large random values. And then we're gonna add this noise to our image. One final note here, the image when we convert it to a double if we take a look at this answer value, these values are no longer 0 to 256. They're in fact scaled between 0 and 1. That's important because if we add random values that go from 0 to 10, well there's no way that we're going to even have a discernible image when we add values to this. Right? If we have a value here of 0.29 and I add 10 to it to 10.29, well, that's a massive number, and it's going to be really hard to even see an image from that. We want to keep our noise small relative to the original image. Hence why I'm dividing by 10 here. That's enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and plot this and see what we're looking at. Here's the original image on the left, and then here's the noise with the image on the right. And you can see that it kind of has this speckly feel to it. And we can increase that. I'll show you what it looks like if I don't even tune that down at all. The values of our noise is too great in comparison to the original image values. So we like to keep that relatively small. There's another way to generate noise. Again, I like this method because we have control over it. But MATLAB does have a noise command. And to do this, I have it set up right here. You're going to do I am noise. I am noise adds a certain specified type of noise to the image and then you have to resave that image. To check this out more, go ahead and do doc I am noise and you'll see that there's quite a few options. Gaussian noise, which is what we were doing earlier actually. Poisson noise, some local variable stuff, salt and pepper, speckle. I've got speckle in here right now. Then you can choose to what degree you want that noise to come in at. We'll plot this and do a montage. And you can see it's it's not as bad of noise here, but it's still speckled throughout. And you can increase that to have more intense noise in the image, and then you can see it's real clearly there. From here, we've got our dirty crap image now that we've put noise into. We need to filter that out. And MATLAB has a median filter command. A median filter will go over this image and take the median value of an array. 
So if we have our dirty image, which I think should be this now, it'll go through here, look at a section, and then find the median value. So it'll rank these from, you know, order them from smallest to largest, and then grab the middle value and replace the center of that with the middle of these values. That's good and bad, right? If there's a lot of noise, well, we're going to grab a median value that's crap noise. But if there's a little bit of noise, if only one of these values, let's say, you know, is one here, well, the middle value then will be great. And that's different than just doing the blur, right? The blur went through these, took a full average. So the blur included the maximum values, whereas a median filter only grabs the center value and excludes kind of those min and maxes that are seen in this local 3x3 region. So median filtering is considered a pretty good technique. We can apply this here and see how well we do. We use medfilt2 on the image to create a new image and then we can show the pair. If we run this, ugh, it's unfortunate. You know, there's a lot of noise in this. And hence, we get an image that, I don't know, arguably isn't that much better. But let's look at different noise conditions. Here we have the original on the far left. In the middle, we have our, our noise going on. And then on the right, we try to filter that out. And this is getting a little bit better now. Again, it's not perfect, and there's no really perfect way to do this, but I'm just showing you one possible way to go about filtering your images after you've added random noise to it. So go ahead, screw around with these features, see what happens if you try some blurs on this image. Try then thresholding afterwards. Compare the thresholds of doing a blur to doing this median filter over here, and see what's more beneficial for doing what you need to do. Remember, in image processing, you're turning all the different knobs, using all the different tools that you're being taught in this image processing series, and then applying them in the best way to get the result that you need. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.